trade the tips. There's my email, guys. Send me a message if you have Thinkorswim. And um, I found the settings inside of there to make your channels that are, I mean, pretty damn close to the ones that I do on TradingView, like within one tick probably. Um, I just came across it by accident. Let's frame this up for today. I was telling you guys, I, didn't, I have not taken any trades the last two days. It has been um, just crazy on the market. But let me draw channel on here. You guys know, I just for our Wednesdays to keep it consistent, I do a white channel for the daily and I do a red channel for the 60 minute. And that's really and truthfully, it's only because I just, I did it on one of the videos and to keep it consistent because a lot of people that follow me, they'll ask me about red or white channels. So I've just kept them consistent um, on there. So we're going to draw one on the daily. And if you look, pull down here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 days. We haven't even been close to that center channel line. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So 30, even though we're 31, 30, about 32 trading days, which is six weeks, we've remained in this lower channel. We've wicked above it a couple times. Uh, and if you've read the, let's see here, where's my little, uh, but if you read this price action breakdown book by Dimitri Lemire, uh, and that's where these channels come from. It's nothing uh, proprietary or whatever. Um, you can buy the book for 10 bucks. Uh, but these wicks are indications on the higher time frames, daily, weekly, monthly, 240s, uh, even hourly, uh, of big banks and institutions pushing it back up into where they want it to go. Look at this point right here, 2009. We're going to draw a channel. Now, I dropped it there. Let's see. If you hover over it, it'll have the dot where you had it, and then I can move it to current candle. All right. Now I'm going to zoom in and look where we are at. Amazingly, where did we stop today? Now we're right on it for the new candle, but look where, look where we're, we have actually opened above it. Now that doesn't mean that it can't come back down in here and work its way back down. But this is another reason why I didn't want to mess with today. We are, if you look over on the daily gap from back in February 21st to the 24th. That gap, we're right in the middle of it. And we have jacked around in that all day long. And I'm like, I don't, you know what I mean? I'm just not taking it. Um, I mean, I think we're going to go up. I think we'll fill this gap to 33, 26, 75, and more than likely probably go to 33, 39. That's an 11 year channel that has been pretty much respected. So let's drop down to a one hour. That's within the one hour. Now, one thing you guys can do too, um, I like to just see where we're at. If you right click that channel underneath your settings, visibility, you pull it up here. You can make this show up on whatever chart you want. So I'm gonna take this off. My daily chart is still on there, uh, but it's not gonna show up on my hourly. That way I don't have all these lines all over the place. Um, I do this a lot for like my weekly chart. It's set to where it only shows up on the weekly. Daily, you know, only set up on the daily. Uh, so let's take that off. Now, if I go back over to my daily, there's my channel. Go back to an hour and you don't end up with a bunch of junk on your screen and it makes it super nice. And then you can always go over here in your um, object tree. It's down here on the bottom right. You click this. You can go through and right click and name. You know what I mean? I can name this daily channel for today. Uh, whatever channel on this day. And save them in there and what I've been playing around with with my normal workspace is saving my channels and uh, basically the things I made all my decisions on that day, I'm saving them in there underneath that date. And then later on, if we come back to that level again, typically we're going uh, to play around in those same channels. Uh, you already have them on there. Uh, it's amazing. And how I came across that was I drew channels for one of these Wednesday events. I didn't look at that workspace for a week. And when I logged on to look at it, we had come back down bounced off that channel, got in it, and then was in it for several days, the exact same channel from like a week before. Can you see the big banks and institutions pushing that back into the channel at all on these chops? They're, I mean, this is an all-out war right now going on between them. Uh, now, just a little bit ago, if you take off that channel, it looks like we're completely sideways that uh, on there. But if you turn it back on, you can actually see we're creeping up very, very slow. But you can look at this battle. You can – these big, long wicks – pushing back into the channel are opportunities that you can take for a long going out of there. Now, 
I am not a good trader in those situations. Now, what you can do is go down to 15 minute in there, and now you can find uh, better opportunities. Like you're not going to hit a 50 point home run in this. It's a 13 point range. So, you know, I don't want to play in that range. Now you can, you can go down to a five minute. All right. And then turn on bits, set this as your default. This is my own personal deal. I don't need to see yesterday's high, yesterday's close, mid, yesterday's low. So you can go in here. One, I don't want them so bright. So I, I take mine down to about a quarter and I make them thinner. Okay. And then I go yesterday's low down to a quarter, make it thinner. Yesterday's close, take it down to a quarter up in there, make it thinner. Mid range, same way, quarter, thinner. Today's open, take it down and thinner. All right, and then labels, you uncheck this box and you'll notice that this big old box up here that says long at whatever, that's the bits uh, where it draws the entry, suggests a stop loss in your lines, that you can take that off and those go away. The, late, the lines still stay there, but you don't have all that crap on your screen, uh, taking up screen space. Okay, now you're not over yet. Click on that instead of save it. And don't hit reset settings because it'll undo everything you just did. Click save as default and then okay. And then from now on, every time you add roller coaster to, uh, or excuse me, bits to any of your stuff on here, it's going to apply those defaults. So how, see how the screen is like so much easier to read. You want to look for these big wicks coming back in here. If you notice, the cyan came down, crossed over when we crossed through the channel, and then came back. And when it crossed back over, this candle came down, tested the bottom of that channel, and came back up. Now, if you add on, our bias down here was green on that candle. That So following our rules, we're in the channel. Even though it's a sideways day, we are barely slightly trending up. You're taking your... Better bets is taking the bottom or the tops of the channel that don't even jack with this in here. That, that's, that's the most extreme chop in there. Uh, so cyan comes down. Now we just barely went through the yellow. Like you're not going to take a short on that because there's no reason to. And then it crossed back over. When it did, cyan crossed over the yellow. One reason to go long. The candle went above the purple point of control dots right there. I hover right over that and you can see the purple point of control right there. Two reasons to go long, okay? We also wicked out of the channel on the candle before, came down, retested it, and was going up. Three reasons to go long, okay? Now look down below here on that candle. I'm just gonna leave my mouse there. You can see the dotted line going across it. The uh, bias dot turned green. We had you know, we've been green, 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 one indecision candle there, and that was the power down. Then it came back up. Green, 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 green forever, and then boom, boom, two candles down, went up one, boom, 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 down below, three yellows, and then boom, we got our next buy stop. Four reasons to go long. All right, now, oscillator did go down, okay, but if you look, we went up and down like this uh, in here and never saw any red, okay? So with this coming down, we didn't bottom out, uh, and it wasn't even close to turning red that because it turned around and then started getting bigger and bigger. So you have five reasons to go long. This one, maybe you could put it out there on one side of a, uh, you know, maybe. Uh, we're, let's do that. Let's keep it four reasons. Yes, one, maybe. We, we don't have any clear no's yet. Then if you look down below your, uh, I've been studying the stochastics on this and the red line when it crosses over and goes back up, that is typically a change, which if you look right there at that exact same spot, let me blow this up, it crossed over and then came back up right there. But it pivoted and went up. And then if you look at RSI, now the one thing with RSI, if you go back, uh, see it really truthfully, the, the last two days have not been good. We haven't had like good solid pivots, you know, like this one, this one right here, that's just a nice V. It goes boom, boom, straight out. And look at the move, you know what I mean? This one was 32.58 to where it topped off for at 32.80. You know what I mean? You got uh, 22 points in that one move and then it kept on going. Then it went 32.95. Out of there, I mean, you're talking 40 freaking points uh, out of there. 
And that was a nice, just boom, you know, and then it turns around and rips up. Well, look what we got right now going on right through here. And this is on 15 minutes. There's not a lot of um, ripping action straight. Now this one right here did, but it's only three candles. And then it turns around and it's, it's just going sideways. It, this just looks like crap. You don't see a lot of straight up, you know, you're gonna have some pullbacks in there, but it goes up and straight down. You just got this junk right here. Uh, I don't like it, that, uh, and that's why I'm not trading right now. And that's why I put that on Twitter, that of uh, why I wouldn't take it. And here's a bits uh, signal that actually just hit. Uh, I'm too much babbling and not taking it. Um, all right, cyan crossed over right here, came up over, retested the yellow right here, and bounced off. But when it retested it, what is that? That's the center channel line, and the candle before did a nice wick below, and then we opened above that red line. Let's see what the volume looks like. I mean, we got uh, some green bars out of there. It's on the second target, one, two, yeah. Almost hit the third. And then roller, co roller coaster, and eh, just had a little one there. Let's go down to five minutes, see what we can pull out of here. That thing will probably rock it back in there, unless there's some news that I don't know about right now that's going on. Uh, five minute, they had a couple moves in there, uh, not, you know, monstrous. I mean, they had 33, 18, 23 to 21. So I'm, I'm only talking three points. And it, I don't know about you. I want a move that is like this, where I get a nice pivot in my RSI. I get a scarcity turnover. Red's going smaller. Had a series of yellows or reds before and then green. And then it rockets to the freaking moon. Those are what I'm looking for. If I don't see those, I just don't take the stupid trade because you don't have to trade. I think that's the hardest thing is um, we're all so used to working and we feel like we have to make money every single day. And it's like, no. And in all honesty, you only have to make money a couple times a month. You just got to be, uh, you know what I mean? You got to pick the right ones. You don't have to over trade. And if you're over trading, now you got to compensate for your losses, whatever your ratio is. I mean, are you 50% winning? Are you 60? Are you 70? Are you 80? Some, some weeks I can, I'll go back and look at my numbers and I might be 82% right. And then other weeks I may be 52% right. And everything was right. You know, it was just me. It, uh, like, and that's, uh, I think an important thing for you to recognize when you see this crap right here, when you wake up in the morning and I don't know what time is this. This is 2.30, 2.30 in the morning. You wake up at 7 o'clock, 7.30 in the morning, and you see this right here. All we've done is gone sideways. Don't even think about getting in there. You just, I mean, look at even this busting out here doesn't even get me excited about anything because it's like, it ain't going anywhere. Let's go back to five minutes looking for opportunities inside of that channel. I Basically, there are some in there. We can go down to even a two-minute but you're basically just scalping while you're there at that time. Uh, well, that thing's really rocking it up. Uh, 33, 19, and went to 27. It's one of the bigger moves of the, of the day. But there's opportunities in here of cyan crossing over up here. If you look right here, let me zoom in a little more. Cyan crossing over, you have a wick. I mean, this is a two minute chart, so I don't put as much weight to it, but you have a, a, a ton of wicks right here that we could not bust out of that channel. Went back down there, tried it again to close outside of it, and then wicked out again and came back. That is your entry at 33.21. Cyan crossed over here. So we had a wick outside the channel at the top of the channel going down. One reason to go short. Cyan crossed over the yellow. Two reasons to go short. We're below the purple point of control dots. Three reasons to go short. Then you drop down. It crossed over right here. If you can look, we went from green, 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 let me hover back over again, to our first indecision as it came over. Four reasons to go short. Our oscillator came down and was smaller. I mean, the very next candle, it went to red. Five reasons to go short. Your stochastics actually crossed over um, a couple candle, four candles before, um, eight minutes before that. Six reasons to go short. And then here is your RSI, the candle as it switched over, RSI went straight down. So you have six reasons to go short there. Now, one thing I forgot, let's add on Elliott Wave real quick. 
typically people will have Elliott Wave on one screen and Bias and Roller Coaster on another one. I like to just have Bias and Roller Coaster on mine. But one of the other, uh, re all right, so we had six reasons to take this short. All right, the seventh reason would be, let me turn off Roller Coaster real quick. These red and blue lines right here are your 6-4 moving average as part of the Elliott Wave Suite. One of the other rules is you don't take a short until, and you can see it right here, curves around, until you're below that 6-4 moving average. So if you want a more conservative entry, that entry was right there is where that was. So there's seven, eight reasons to go short now. Either. Now this was, on a two-minute chart, a fifth wave moved down, believe it or not. Um, it was three and four was all in one candle, and they stopped, closed, and opened on the center channel line, came back up, and it came back down. Now that, 33.18.50 to 33.16.50, that's not enough air above or below where you're going. Uh, I, that's, you know, when I first started in trading, you know, yeah, I'd be happy to scalp, you know, eight ticks, 10 ticks and do that five, six times a day. And I thought I was a king. And then at the end of the day, you get your um, brokerage statement and, you know, you're like $90 in fees. Like, what the hell? And it's like, then you realize that you cannot take six or eight ticks and make any money because they're going to take four ticks away from you and <laughs> freaking fees, it seems like, out of there. So let's go, let's go to, uh, oh, this is a new, uh, a new item. If you notice up here, uh, TradingView just came out with these, I think today, if I remember right. Um, let's see, I'm in SIM, all right, yes. I'm in SIM. So if I wanted to take this trade now, originally, if I wanted to take a trade right now, I would have to click this little arrow and none of these stay the way you want them. So I'd have to click market. And then I had, you know, and then it's wherever it's at. So you're one, stop loss, we're gonna do eight. And then I gotta do short, and then you can do it. Well, you can see how long that freaking takes, which is not good. So we'll close this one out. Now, so if you're sitting there watching like this move right here while we're sitting there talking and we're like, oh crap, this looks like a move we need to take. You can just go over here and just hit buy. Now it's not going to have a stop loss on there. So the first thing that you do, if you just hover over the one, click it, click stop loss, and then put in whatever you want, 10, hit modify, and there's your stop loss. And then you can move it around however you want after that. Did I click long on there? I guess I did. Um, that is a new feature that is awesome. Now, if, if you don't want those on your screen, you can just right click your screen and hit settings. Um, I believe, let me see, I think for the under symbol, trading. Show buy sell buttons. And you see them disappear up there on the left. Uh, I'm really glad they added them. It's, uh, it'll come in really handy for those quick trades where you're sitting there watching it and then you're like, the, the you know, seven seconds it takes you to get over here to get something done, you know what I mean? It's moved three points and now you're 12 ticks, you know, in the negative on it. All right, I don't see I don't see anything from anybody else unless you're writing a novel and I haven't seen it yet. Um, we'll just go through all of these actually. We'll uh, let's just go over to YM. Same way with it. Go to your daily. And also when you do when I do this white channel, you just get that bottom of the pivot to there. When you right click that channel. You can go in here to the inputs and change it to whatever you want. High, low, closed. I have been messing around with high, low, closed divided by four. And if, if you watch that, it tightens up on a three just a little bit, but it opens up just I mean, like a millimeter on four. Uh, I've been playing around with some different deviations for the top and the bottom. Um, I don't know. We'll see what happens on it. But visibility-wise, this is where you would undo if you only want it to show up on the daily or weekly. And then style is where you change the color. And I just changed it to white. I think at default it's red or something. Uh, and you want Pearson's R on there. I don't know exactly what it actually is. I just know everyone says Pearson's R is really good. And then you save as, and then you can name it W5T Daily Channel White. 
So, all right, so we have the Dow. I'm going to run through these because what time is it? We got 20 minutes left. Uh, let's go down to an hour and we're going to look for, I don't like the volume. I'm going to take this pivot from, really in true play, I should take it from here to here because it's been such a tight range. I don't want, this is too much uh, moving around uh, and it's been tight as hell from here to here. So we are going to keep this one. And I'm going to go from the bottom of there to the top of there. And you can see that's been super, super accurate on there. Now we drop down to 15 minute. You can see some nice wicks pushing back into that channel. Those are, uh, are your telltale signs. Here's a super nice one. Of, what do you call it? A shooting star or doji or whatever that is right there. That was a nice move there. 27.057 to 989. Just not a lot of movement going on in there. Uh, and then add your bits on there. So inside this on a 15 minute, we got a nice come down. The candles touch the bottom. You got your nice wicks for the big banks and institutions pushing it back up into the channel. Your cyan cross. Oh, so at the bottom of the channel to go long, one reason to go long, and it's good. Cyan crosses over the yellow, two reasons to go long. Above the purple point of control dots, three reasons to go long. Right down here, Yellow, yellow, it was green forever, yellow, 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 yellow forever, and then boom, your first green dot, guess what, is the one that goes across the cyan, crosses over, four reasons to go long. Your oscillator never turned red, started getting bigger back up, five reasons to go long. That, and same way, guys, like I said before, and gals, that the, this comes down, uh, this could be in your, uh, it's not red, uh, it's not bad, uh, but it is what it is. So we have five yeses and a maybe. Stochastic crosses over on the very next candle. Six reasons to go long. And your RSI flipped over right here to go long right here. Now, it's not a huge, you know, straight up move. Uh, but, I mean, you've got seven reasons to go wrong and one maybe. That's a good reason to take that trade. And it, it actually worked out really, really nice. It came back, retested the bottom of the channel and the yellow line. And the thing is, I don't... Um, I don't know what's behind each one of these. I just follow the rules. I mean, and it works. That's the easiest way to put it. But we come back, retest it, came back up again and hit the top of the channel. Now, I can tell you, me, if we touch the top of this channel and this was a, a bits long signal right here, target one, two, three, and four, almost to the tick and the top of the channel, I'm going to move my stop loss up here and take it as close as I can to the top. And then we didn't cross back over. Now, the candle did, came back up, but the... Cyan line stayed above, retested it again, and then took off again. And look what happened. Wicked out of there, come back. We didn't test the bottom here yet, and we're going to probably test the top of that. So that's on 15. Drop down to a 5. Now we do have a uh, roller coaster signal possibly up there. I'm going to be really hesitant because it's so close to the top of that channel line. Let's see what we got down here. So we had a, a nice one there from the center, just a little bit below all the way down outside of the channel. I'm not going to wait for it to stop out up here. You're going to, I move my, when we get to the channel bottom, I move my stop loss to the channel bottom or one tick, you know, below wherever price we're at down there. It's because almost always it's going to turn around and come out. Now it may not always, but more times out of, uh, I'm going to save more taking that one tick there than the little bit more I might've got for it to violate the channel. Uh, then we turn right back around cyan crossed over above the point of control. Yellow, yellow, yellow went green. Red was, it went two candles in there, but we were going smaller, 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 smaller for five, six candles before, which is 30 minutes. So that's a good sign. Your stochastic crossed over right there, which was one, two, three candles before, 15 minutes before it crossed over. Uh, and then your RSI right here. When it when we touched the bottom channel line, imagine that. Look down below at the very bottom where it says 8.4 at 20.35-ish. RSI turn around and goes straight up out of there. So you were looking for a reason to go long right there. Now, me personally, I would have taken it when we came back into the channel because we've been respecting it really well. Uh, but if you wanted to be very conservative, you could take it outside of there. And if you really wanted to be extra conservative, you could take the roller coaster entry up here and take it up to the center channel line. And then Elliott wave wise, let's go in on the five minute. Elliott wave is our best indicator. Uh, I have just gotten so, uh, good enough with my eyes that I can see a fifth wave move. Uh, now, on these smaller time frames, I tend to miss them a little bit, but roller coaster usually picks up the third wave. So if I have roller coaster on, and like this right here, this looks like to me a one, two, three, four, and a fifth wave move. 
So let's just isolate off this pivot point right here off the thing. That's candle 20,906, if you look right here. 20,906. So we go up to Elliott Wave, click the sprocket. It inputs 20,906. Click OK. Now I'm going, let's see where we turn off. Looky there. What did I tell you? Uh, I can see it with my own eyes, that I don't have to have it on there. Uh, let's take off roller coaster so it's easier to see. And so we did a 20,906. Actually had a one, the thing on the smaller time frames, you're not gonna get a large, uh, now this was a nice move here, boom, boom, boom. Seven to 10 candles is the best. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You couldn't get any better than that. I don't like quick little hits uh, where it goes up, comes down, and it's like really, really tiny. I don't like those. Like this one here, this one actually was a three candle, third, fourth, and fifth wave move in three, three five minute candles. I don't like those, I don't mess with those. This one came up third wave, one, two, three, four, five, six uh, candles down, and then came out. Uh, but let me tell you why I wouldn't take that. Your six, four moving average is right here at 26, 721. The first target is 7.38. I mean, it is 17 ticks at five bucks a piece. Uh, not bad, but there's too much risk in there for me. That because your channel, you know what I mean? Like you're trying to get here, and the channel top is right above it. There's if you hear Paul say or other people say there's not enough fresh air above. It. Like you want to see something you can climb. Like uh, for instance, this one right here. There's fresh air above here because we can climb to the top of the channel because we're at the bottom of the channel. Over here, we're already almost at the top. So the chances of us busting out of this and going wherever is not as high. So you've got a one and a two. This was a three right here, but because it kept going, the three moves after you hit your fifth wave target, the fifth wave turns into a three. So this was a three. And one of the rules is we draw a channel on the third to the fourth wave pullback. So let's go over here to, where is my fourth wave pullback channel? Go to the top of that candle. You pull it down. The lowest point was this red candle. You can see right there. Drop that channel down. Okay. You do not want to go long until you are outside of that channel. And look how good it was. It came down and retested it and took off out of there. Uh, so you want to be outside the channel we were outside the channel on this candle. One reason to go long. You want to be above the blue 6-4 moving average, those lines right there. We went above it right there. Two reasons to go long. Now, the next candle did come down, 27.56. Went three ticks down, so well within your stop loss range. Uh, but it, And that's kind of, in a way, a little more confirmation because it tested the outside of the channel and then quickly moved back, uh, which is good. But So we're above 6-4 moving average outside of the candle. We didn't violate the Elliott wave, uh, green, amber, and red. So it's a 75% chance because we pulled down into the red that this was going to be successful. There's three reasons to go long. Now, on the fourth wave pivot, this is great down here that it was yellow because uh, we, we were a sea of green going long, even though it was pulling back in there. Um, four reasons to go long. Now, your oscillator never crowned. Now, you'll hear me say, I do not like taking a trade if it does not crown that on a fifth wave move. I just don't, I tend to get uh, hammered on those. We'll go to Fib Retracement and 91.40. And you'll go to the wave four, you go to zero, and then go back up to the high of wave three. And I typically move this just a little bit to line it up straight. We didn't crown, so there's nothing to see there. Uh, so five reasons to go long. We didn't violate the 140. Bella, be quiet. 140. Uh, and then you've got your stochastic crossed over a couple candles before. And actually, that one that came out, it crossed over again. Six reasons to go long. And then your RSI clicked up over here. Seven reasons to go long. Uh, and then if you had your bits on, I assure you, cyan crossed over, eight reasons to go long. So, and above the point of control, nine reasons to go long. Zero reasons not to take this trade, nine reasons to take it. If you grade a trade like this, every single time, you will 
I think you will make less mistakes. You will take better quality trades. If you don't have five reasons to take a trade, don't freaking take it just because like, oh, well, it probably should, you know, it probably should work. Uh, and then here, look, look at this one. This is a failed, uh, failed one right here. Let's do the failed one. So that wave five, which we hit the target, went sideways and then continued on. So it became a longer three and another wave four pullback. So let's do another channel from the wave three to the wave four. All right. And then, so the reasons to go long out of this thing is you need to be, we didn't violate the green, yellow, and red. That's a good reason. We were outside the channel. There's two reasons to go long. But cyan actually crossed over right here. There's three reasons to go long. But we weren't outside of the 6-4 moving average until above this next candle right here. All right, so you're not going to take any of these in here. Now, you probably could have 28, 6, 8, 60. I mean, you got 25 ticks in there at, what is it now, five bucks a piece? So I mean, it's a quick hundred bucks. Uh, I wouldn't have taken that um, out of there until we got outside of this. Um, your oscillator was good. It was going up. Your stochastic crossed over. You got five, six, seven. Uh, you, th this was, you had six, seven reasons to go long and really none to not take it, but it failed. That's just the way that it is. You know what I mean? You're, there's no indicator. There's no, you know, the markets, we're not going to pick every single uh, trade perfectly. But this one, if you did take it and it took off, as soon as it goes, if, my trades, when they are five ticks positive, I move my stop loss to one tick profit. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and it stops me out. Now, sometimes do I get screwed, and it comes down, touches it, and then races off to where I was at, and I'm like, damn, because I can't get in fast enough, and it shoots three points up. Now the train has already left the station, and you can't, you know what I mean? You're going to jump onto the tracks. Uh, and then it, the train may come back and run you over uh, and stop you out again. So uh, my thing is, is if I do that one tick profit uh, after it's five, eight ticks positive, if I get a runner and it takes off, great. If I don't and it quickly comes back and hits me, I don't get hit with an 8 to 10, 12 tick stop loss that stops me out instantly and now I'm $125 in the hole. Now i got $12.50 profit minus $4 or so in fee. I'm $8 ahead and I don't have a loser. So even if, I, if that happens to me three times, I'm $24 ahead with zero loss. So then when I do hit one that takes off, it goes good.